Yo, what is going on guys? Hess here, CollectiveKicks.com. If you guys want to shop this week's top sneaker deals, check the link in the description. As well as if you want to see any of the other previous videos that I post in the last couple weeks, I host them over at CollectiveKicks.com. In this video, I wanted to give you guys a comparison between the Air Max 270 versus the Air Max 720. Just basically show you guys a side-by-side -side comparison, which is something I like to do. As well as show you guys a couple other uh, evolutionary steps in the Air Max line. So I don't know about you guys, but I personally have been an Air Max fan since uh, the beginning of it, really. Like, I really loved the concept of the ability to walk on air, the visible air bubble, Michael Jordan playing in Air Jordan sneakers, and so on. So it's kind of been something that a lot of people have loved since uh, the beginning with the Air Max 1. And it really evolved a lot every single year, as you can see the lineage down here, up until 2019, even with the Air Vapor Max 2019. So it's kind of fun to see, especially for somebody that's been an avid collector of Nikes for a long time now, and seeing all of the different releases that end up coming out. And uh, so th that's part of the reason why I wanted to get this shoe, as well as to show you guys uh, a little bit of the history that I have here. I'm not an expert in any of this stuff, I'm just somebody that's been a collector and I appreciate what Nike's released. And it's been something that, again, I've been um, collecting for a long time. So one thing I wanted to show you guys is the insole of the Air Max 360. And it has an evolutionary like look at the Nike Air Max. Basically pivotal moments at the Air Max. So you have the Air Max 1, the Air Max 90, 180s, 93s, 95s, 97s. 2003 and then the Air Max 360 down here in 2006 which is this model right here so kind of cool they have the branding Air Max 360 I remember these I had a bunch of these back in the day when they originally released this is one that I picked up on eBay like years later just because I wanted to get another pair of them in the collection but these are the 360s and back in the day I thought this was the closest thing we had to walking on air you could see it's a full-length air unit underneath but it's encased in some type of harder plastic so you don't get that full sensation of walking on air or anything like that uh, but it was kind of a cool concept and these ones definitely were something that were game changing back in 2006. So fast forward now and again we have something crazy with this with the Air Max 720 as it's a complete air unit all the way around and there's very minimal casing up here on the top it's harder plastic here but this whole entire thing is just a massive air unit and then you have the vapor max which is segmented at the bottom but it's the entire thing the midsole is the air unit so this is really very very close to walking on air as well so the evolutionary steps have been pretty cool to see the 360s down to the vapor max now with the 720s and just to show you guys some of this lineage here again started with the air max one tinker hatfield designed these ones in 87 first pair of Air Maxes with the window on the bottom. This is like the most classic colorway ever. Uh, definitely like one of the coolest colorways just because it's the OG of the original. And then we have the Air Max 90s and this is like one of my favorite colorways of all time as well just because again it's one of the originals from back in the day. Then we move on to the Air Max 180s. You can see they have the air unit on the bottom that goes across the bottom. I actually really love these back in the day too. I just thought they looked so cool and how it was like clear on the bottom even. So the Air Max 93s have the bubble that went all the way around the back. It wasn't just a little window. It wasn't something on the bottom, but it was all the way around the back. So that was kind of cool with the 93s. The 95s took it a little bit further and it's the first one that you see with air unit in the front as well as the big air bubble on the back. And it really gave you more of like that visible look of walking on air. The 97s took it one step further and you can see it's a massive air unit down the entire shoe. So this was the very first one with one unit that's a full length air, which was pretty cool to see uh, back in the day. After the 97s, the next jump is the 2003s, which is a pair that I don't actually have here. Um, I used to have them, but I don't have them anymore. But between those, there was actually a couple other shoes here that are noteworthy in my opinion. I don't remember the years of any of these in the order, so I apologize. But the Tuned Air, which recently released, and this is one of my favorites that released in 2018. I love this colorway, so sick. Uh, original Tiger colorway. So this has the Tuned Air on the bottom, as you can see it has little dots here. And I don't know, it was not the most comfortable shoe in the world still, but I love the concept of it and the look of it, especially with the overall uppers and stuff were nuts. A lot of you guys already know that the Air Max Deluxe is one of my favorites, again, that released in 2018 uh, in the OG colorway, and it has the Air Max 97 bottom, but the uppers were just way doper, in my opinion, than what the 97s offer. We also had, back in 98, uh, the Air Max 120s which is a noteworthy one just for this video since these are the 720s and the 270s. Figured why not show you guys the 120s as well. Uh, I love these back in the day. I know myself and Fomer Simpson are big fans. And then we have like the Tuned Air Max 
And this one came out with the Alpha series with the five dots on the back. And then the last ones to uh, note is the Tailwinds, which are supposedly getting a comeback in 2019. A lot of people hated these back two, three years ago when I pulled these out, people would say that these are like ultimate dad shoes before the dad shoe wave was cool. Uh, but um, the Tailwinds are super, super fresh back in the day. They had this massive air unit on the back, as you could see, and then the front air here. So it was just kind of like a more different style version of like a 95 or something like that. But really loved these ones back then also. Then after that full length air of the 2003, followed by the 2006 uh, Air Max 360s, we did see um, sort of an evolution of the Air Max lineage with the Air Maxes that you can see here. They had the same midsole and quite a few models from I think 2013 onwards, uh, but this air unit is the same on a lot of them. This is a 2016 version and it was just a big massive air unit and really comfortable actually. I really, really liked this um, air unit. It was one of the best that I remember. And then I also have a Flyknit version that I used all the time, just super comfortable. Uh, air unit. So after that we saw the 270s in 2017 and then we saw the Vapor Max as well during the same time frame. So big evolutions in air with this air unit on the bottom and then this air unit on the bottom of the Vapor Max. Now we have the brand new 720s. So that was a lot to cover but there was a lot of different pairs of lineage that led up to this shoe right here. So for people that don't really appreciate that this is the shoe that ended up coming out. Just look at the long-standing history of all of the shoes that I just showed you. Nike's had a long run with Nike Air and somebody like myself appreciates what they have coming out because it's fun to look back and see the humble beginnings of the Nike Air versus what they actually are able to achieve today with the technology advancements and crazy engineering that, that they're able to bring to the table. So hopefully you guys like that breakdown, a little bit of all of the lineage if I miss anything feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. Again, I'm not the expert, I'm just a collector that uh, wanted to show you guys some of the stuff that I have collected through the years. So now that we've got a little bit of the background of the Nike Air, I wanted to show you guys uh, a side-by-side -side of the massive stacks of the 270s versus the 720s. I thought originally that they were exactly the same on the back section of the shoe, but when I look at these in person, the air unit on the 720s actually looks bigger even in the back section of the shoe. So you can see the top to bottom here to here, the distance from the top to bottom here to here on the 720s is actually much bigger uh, than on the 270s. So this gap here is bigger on the 720s. So in general, the 720 definitely has a bigger air unit than the 270s. And if you guys have tried the 270s, you already know that this is a pretty big, massive uh, air unit on the back. It's so interesting because there's such a huge amount of air on the 720s that when you step and compress, this whole thing kind of just falls down and collapses, which is a similar experience that you have like on the Vapor Maxes as well, just because of the mass amounts of air uh, in the shoe. And to point out one thing, the Vapor Max and the 720s have a lot in common in the fact that they have a full air unit, but this one is for performance, supposedly, this one's for lifestyle. It's almost like Nike said, hey, let's have two teams go out there and create what your experience of walking on air would be. And then one reports back and it's like, this is a Vapor Max with the segmented air on the bottom and it's gonna be geared towards performance running. And then these guys came back and they're like, well, yeah, but we have one massive air unit with a huge butt and uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and release this one, but it's hard to gear this one towards performance. So let's call this one the lifestyle one. So I, I think it's kind of interesting how they took two different directions on more or less the same concept and a completely different design. And I don't know, I kind of dig it. I like that they have some sort of a variety out there. Back to the comparison though, we'll, we'll take a look at these shoes side by side. There really is not too much that is the same on these shoes. The uppers are completely different. The shapes of the shoes are different. Uh, all of the materials are different. There's no real similarities to this upper. The only similarity is to that 270 air unit on the back uh, versus the 720. So even on the bottoms, you could see the similarities are only to the section of the uh, 270 unit versus the 720. This is like a knockdown version of what you have here. And I will say side by side, like it feels like a knockdown version. The 720s are definitely a nicer build quality than the 120s. This definitely feels like cheaper materials versus the nicer materials on the 720s. I think that that is kind of a smart approach from Nike, but even though they're not really comparable, let's go ahead and try to compare them. The toe box area is totally different. You have Hyperfuse across the front of the shoe with a little Nike swoosh. The other pair, you have a thicker like plastic Hyperfused material over top of the toe guard section and a little Nike swoosh in the middle of the shoe right here. And then on the toe section, you have Max on the 270s. There is no branding on the other one. But speaking of branding, we might as well talk about it because a lot of people have been mentioning this in the news. 
and that is the Air Max logo on the bottom. Some people are saying it looks like, I believe, Allah or something like that, and it's like an Islam reference, and it's kind of a diss in a sense because you're stepping on uh, Allah or something. I, I don't know all of the details. I did see a little bit of it. I don't really see the resemblance. You have to turn it the logo upside down, and then it supposedly looks like it around here, but um, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? I mean, it's kind of a, a touchy thing if people are offended by it, but I think it's quite a stretch to be honest that it looks like what they say it looks like that was obviously not the intent the intent is to look at the shoe like this which it looks nothing like the religious symbol that they're suggesting this isn't anything new to nike though they've had this problem back in the day in the basketball shoes the air bacons with the air logo looked like the same sort of thing a lot i guess and nike actually pulled it back in the day but that was a much smaller product this is a very heavily branded product brand new 720s uh 270s I mean, they have a lot of shoes out with this, so I doubt that they're going to go ahead and remove that because people are complaining. I just don't see it actually happening because it would be a huge financial backlash to Nike to remove this branding since it's all over the shoe. But leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Should Nike take responsibility and remove it because some people see something that could be offensive? I think at the end of the day, it wasn't meant to be offensive, so I don't think they should honestly do anything about it. That's my personal take on it don't be offended by my personal take but i just don't see it as being something that is offensive um, if it was something blatantly obvious then i would totally agree but it's really not that obvious and it, it's just kind of like a cool logo in my opinion i don't think it was anything malicious the way that they uh, created the logo anyway back to the shoe comparison this is the regular version with the mesh and you can see it just has a mesh upper and then as i mentioned in the unboxing review of these it's a weird mesh material. It's kind of like a treated mesh. It's sticky. It's almost like leather. Um, it's really kind of a cool material. And then you can see all the lines in the shoe that are kind of de-embossed in the shoe. And I actually really like that. It's something that I mentioned is I want to actually color those all black. I might get the sunset pair and actually pen those in and make it all black because I think it would look really cool. You do have a lot of crazy designs with the vents on the side of the 720s. Meanwhile, the 270s don't have any crazy designs. 270s have a little bit of hyperfuse up the side of the shoe here. Meanwhile, the 720s just have uh, more reinforcement for support. Probably needed because of the massive air unit on the 720s. Then you move your way back to the heel section of the shoe and you can see the 270s actually have support in a different location than the 720s. And so in the 720s, the support comes up here in the front dips down and then has more reinforcement in the back of the heel versus the 270s the support really just comes right up here on the side of the shoe so it gives you some good support here in the back part and then the 720s have more support kind of throughout the shoe the back section is different as well you can see the 270 logo right here and this 270 only comes up uh, three quarters of the way it's like a c versus this 720 the zero goes all the way around this does have an air logo on the back the 720s don't have that air logo uh, on the back it feels like they actually have less branding on the 720s than they did on the 270s and then on the back you have the pull tab that goes up straight up the back and then on the 270s the pull tabs just at the very top the liner of the 720s is actually much nicer material than that on the 270s also there is a little bit of a notch that sticks out on the 270 here that goes up and curves up and on the 720s it doesn't curve up as much so you could see the lockdown is totally different on both of these pairing with that is the tongue and you could see it's a fixed tongue something i didn't really love about the 270s i like a loose tongue like on the um, 720s it's completely detached which is something that i personally prefer and then the branding on the tongue the air max branding versus the air 270. one thing that i wanted to mention is the lacing style of the 720s is actually really similar to the 97s as you can see so kind of uh, interesting how both of these are very very similar so the inside of the shoe, you can see this kind of mirrors the outside. The 270s, however, do have additional branding of the Nike swoosh and the 270. And the last thing I wanted to show you guys again is just a comparison on the soles. I did cover the air unit. On the 720s, it floats down and around, sort of like an inner tube around the shoe. And then the 270s is just more like a horseshoe back down this side, uh, as you could see accented in the orange. But if you work your way on the inside of the shoe right here, this is actually like a really soft foam material. Might be Nike React. Honestly, I don't know. It feels like it. Uh, versus this harder like phylon or whatever this is material but this is harder and shinier as you can see this is duller and definitely much softer and then it goes up and around the entire shoe and then it looks like almost like a hairbrush inside of the shoe and then this little paddle section right here is the um, actual grip and the outsole of the shoe which is the only part that you get versus the 270s you can see has the entire section out here that is outsole traction and then also a middle section. So I think that that is kind of a major difference uh, between the two as well. But again, that's just because of the overall layout 
due to this massive air bubble uh, inside of this shoe right here. So, so is it worth buying the 720s in general? I mean, it's really subjective. It really depends on you as an individual and how much you like Nike Air. If you're looking for the most comfortable shoe on the market for $180, I don't think that this shoe is it. I don't think that this shoe is it either. Your best bet for most comfortable shoe on the market for that $180 price point, for me, it definitely is the Pegasus Turbo. I just love this shoe and I love the technology on here. It does not have Air though, obviously. It has Zoom X and React, but, um, but it's definitely more comfortable in general. And then if you don't have one of these, then the other alternative is this pair right here, the Ultra Boost 2019. And this one's super dirty as I've worn this one a lot, as you can see. But this one is also a great shoe, a lot of bang for the buck, and a really, really comfortable shoe with that Adidas Boost technology. I still think that both of these um, are a much better deal if you're looking for comfort alone. But if you want something with an air bubble, I think that the 720s are definitely a crazy, crazy ride on your feet. They're just so much cushioning on these shoes. It's a pleasant ride, it's comfortable. I will say, as I mentioned in the review, that these actually do fit a little bit snug. I went with a nine and a half, and by the end of the day, my feet were hurting me a little bit in the section like right here. So I definitely feel like I should have gone with a size 10 instead of a nine and a half. You guys can correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong or right about that, but that's just my feet. Uh, so it's, I'd say that you should size up a little bit on these ones. Uh, but I think that they're really comfortable shoes, and if you really love the Air Max lineage, as you can see sort of like I do, then you can't really go wrong with the latest and greatest versions of that. So in my book, the 720s are definitely a good investment. I actually really like them. I think they're really comfortable. But again, they're nothing earth-shattering and game-changing on your feet. Uh, comfortable, but not the most comfortable. If I had to choose just one of these two models, the brand new Vapor Max 2019 versus the Air Max 720, I honestly don't know what direction I would go. I mean, I have a love-hate relationship with the Vapor Max, but, um, and you know, this is a brand new kit on the block. So my instinct says go with the 720s, but honestly, it could change every single week. I might love the 720s one week, and then the next week I might want to try out the Vapor Max again. So I think that you can't really go wrong with either of these. I think both of these are different versions of the latest and greatest like Nike technology with the full length air and they both definitely sort of give you some sort of sensation of walking on air. Kind of subjective to what you like and which is kind of the reason why sneakers are fun. You don't have to all like the same thing and um, one answer is not wrong, you know what I mean? Like if you don't like this shoe and you only prefer the other one then that's totally fine on you. Other people might only prefer this one and hate the Vapor Max. So that's just the way that the cookie crumbles. But one more thing that I thought would be fun to point out is all of the different, I guess, angles or degrees or whatever they are on the shoes. I don't even think this one really counts the Air Max 90 because this was actually themed after the uh, dates, I believe, of the 90s. So this is Air Max 90 from 1990. And then you have the Air Max 93 from 1993, followed by the Air Max 95 from 1995 and the Air Max 97 from 1997. So I think that this one's kind of like a no when it comes to all this, because this is actually from 1990. But I'm putting it out here anyway, because it's called the 90. And then we have the 120, and then we have the 180, followed by the 270s, and then the 360, and then now with the flagship 720. I don't know why that's entertaining to me, but I wanted to put all of these together uh, for you guys in one video. And if you guys like the video, smack the like button. If you guys uh, liked it, just because it took a little bit of effort to find all of the shoes, to put them out in the video. And if I'm missing any of them, let me know. Uh, I'm probably missing some that I'm just not even realizing. But that is the review and that is a video kind of over the top and not necessary for those that are looking for a real simple review. I decided to make it really complicated in this video instead. But hopefully you guys enjoyed nonetheless. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys are interested in purchasing a pair of the 720s, check the link in the description. More colorways will be coming soon. But if you guys are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button if you guys would like. And I post lots of sneaker videos every week. Also, notification bell if you want to be notified of when those videos finally go live. And that's all we have. Thank you again for watching. Have a great rest of the day. More videos very soon. Peace, guys.